Hey, Merry Christmas, it's Beth. And I wanted to share with you a little um, story that's helping Todd and I in this holiday season. We're missing someone that we love very much. There's a woman named Dumeme who lived for the better part of the last two decades as a part of our family. We met her 22 years ago when she was a worker at a children's home. Dumeme has a really difficult story. She was born as an orphan and mistreated significantly as a child, married off as a child bride, eventually was widowed. And she came to live as a part of our family and our family rhythm almost 18 years ago. I can remember that was right around the time Todd and I discovered that verse in 1 Thessalonians that says we were delighted to share not only the gospel with you, but our lives as well. We opened up our family and our home to Mamie, and she became a regular fixture in our house. If you've ever traveled to Monterey during the years that we were living there, you'll remember her always out there offering her salsa and her lemonade. Um, when Todd and I returned to the United States a couple of years ago, Meme would spend half of her year here in Cincinnati with us and half of her year in Mexico. And it was this spring, I remember calling her on Mother's Day and realizing that she had a cough, and a cough that she, she said she had a hard time shaking. Um, by July, that cough wasn't getting any better and it was being complicated and compounded by other medical conditions she had. So she came to the U.S. to, to seek some treatment here. Um, when she got here, I realized really how very sick she was. And uh, throughout the course of July, August, September, October, she was admitted into the hospital here several times, had the very best of care, but eventually on October 11th went home to be with Jesus. And so this holiday season, we're missing her. And I know for some of you, holidays are a time when it, we accentuate the things that we have, but we also remember the things that we've lost. And I... <laughs> I was telling Todd the other day, I remember the two days before she died in the hospital, they were asking her the kind of mental fitness questions they ask you, like, what's your name and what year is it? And she was able to do that pretty well, but we knew she was failing. Then the day that she actually died that morning, she couldn't come up with her name and she couldn't come up with my name. But the thing that comforted her the most, the thing that she could do, is when I started her favorite praise song, Sumit Herme, she could join me in the chorus and sing every one of those words. And I remember looking over at Todd and said to him, like, where is it in us that worship goes that at the end when everything else is squeezed out, we still have it left inside of us? Like, wh what, what is that about worship? God was with us in that room up until that very moment when he took her to be home with him. It just, it makes me think, I want to do this like, this Christmas math with you, like, Listen to this, to this story. So there was Zachariah and Elizabeth, right? They were the married parents of who would become John the Baptist. Zachariah was a priest, and it says in the Bible in Luke that he was, uh, his priestly duty was in June. And it says that they, were, uh, they got pregnant shortly after. So let's say they got pregnant in July. And then when that baby that was growing inside of Elizabeth, John the Baptist, was six months old, so that's put this at December, Elizabeth encountered her, her cousin, which was Mary, the mother of Jesus, freshly conceived with the Lord. And that baby, John the Baptist, leapt inside of his belly, recognizing already who it was he was in the presence of. If that baby was freshly conceived in December, that means the light of the world was conceived during Hanukkah, during the Festival of Lights. Mary, let's assume that she carried that baby nine months, nine months later, would be in the fall, that would be during the harvest season, what they call the Feast of Tabernacles. In fact, John would say in the original language that when Jesus was born, he came and he literally tabernacled among us. It was the one time of the year when shepherds were allowed in the fields, because as you can imagine, no farmer wants shepherds with their animals in their fields eating all their stuff, but after harvest season, they would purposely invite shepherds to come into the fields and bring their animals. They would eat up whatever was left and unharvested, and then they would fertilize those fields for the next growing season. And they would put the animals at night in these like, think of them like caves kind of in the hillside, right? They would push them into these openings in the hills, and then they would light a fire in the opening so the animals wouldn't go out at night, and the shepherd would kind of curl up next to that fire. So just like mentally picture with me what it looked like inside of those caves with those animals, right? That's like, like the dung of all of those animals laying on that floor. And the walls covered with the black soot of that fire year after year after year. Can you think of a dirtier place for an animal to be? Here comes Mary, nine months, ready for Jesus to come out and tabernacle among us. And where does Jesus choose to be born? Not in some palace. 
He came and was among the animals in the dirtiest place you could ever imagine. And I think about like the king of the universe decided that there was no place too dark, too smelly, too musty, too painful, too, too nothing for him to come into. He wants to be in, the, in those kinds of places, in hospital rooms with us, on days when we feel sad and lonely about things that didn't happen or aren't going to be again. He wants to be in tabernacle with us in those kind of places. And I just, I, I think there's something about that kind of truth that just sits well with me when we celebrate a God who came to be with us, that he's not looking to be with us in the, in the pretty places or in the stories that have bows on the end of them. He's here to be with us in all moments. And it's to that God that we can sing until we're all, all with him again.